Hi there, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the second and last video in the restoration of this Saba Transall Deluxe Automatic. I've actually stuck to two videos, which is what I intended to do. And um, usually I say I'm going to make the series short. Things happen and throw me off my stride. So this time I'm happy to say I've complied with what my intention was. Two videos, this is the last one and I do the whole thing. Even with a rather unpleasant surprise that cropped up and uh, really got me. But um, this was done, this was sorted and I'll let you watch the video, find out what it was. Enjoy. I've got to start somewhere and I started with the greatest issue raised in the comments and that is to get rid of that uh, stabisto or the stabil thingy that's on the uh, audio circuit over there. Looking at the schematic, the component we're talking about is this guy over here. Now what it really does is it provides a bias of 1.5 volts to that point over there, which then is the bias for this uh, transistor. And what you've really got here is you can replace it with, it's like a battery, I suppose you'd call it, which uh, provides a very stable voltage, in this case 1.5 volts. And I measured it, I measured it in circuit, and it was giving me 1.53 volts. And the way to get 1.5 volts here, according to a lot of uh, forums that I looked at, is you put diodes in series, you can put two diodes, one in for one for eights in series, and then you put a capacitor across it, 220 microfarad capacitor or so, and that'll give you that uh, diode drop. However, when I tried the two uh, one in for one for eights, it was giving me 1.3 something. It's got to do with the amount of current that's being biased through here. So I decided to put in another diode. I put in two one, one in for one for eights and a OA91, which is a germanium, and that gave me that other 0.2. And I'll show you what the result is in a minute. But uh, basically, this is done. It's been uh, wired up together in, and, and put in some heat shrink. And it replaces the component that I took out of there. So what voltage are we getting across here now? Well, let's have a look. 1.57 volts. And it's very, very constant. Very, very solid. So I think that is good. That's done. So I've satisfied probably about 20 comments about this particular component. I must admit, I've seen these in some of the uh, 80s audio amplifiers. I had never seen it on a portable radio before. I'm sure I'll come across it again, and it makes it easy. Now, what I've done is I've used three diodes. I've used two 1N4148s. I put them across here, got too low a voltage. I got 1.3 something. And then I decided to use a germanium diode, a OA91, I think it was, which is rated for about 50 milliamps, so it's good enough and it gives me another 0.2 volts drop, so 1.57 as we've seen. And as I said, very, very solid, very, very stable. The other component people were worried about was this little guy over here. This is a, selen this is a rectifier, a bridge rectifier. Now, the general opinion is that this is a selenium rectifier and that it's going to go bang and it's going to smell like crazy. Well, first of all, it's not a selenium rectifier. That took me by surprise as well because I thought it was. It's a BY122, which is a 42 volts, 600 milliamp silicon bridge rectifier. And so I'm not replacing it. I've never seen a silicon bridge rectifier blow up and start smelling like crazy. I think that's the purview of the selenium brands. So I'm leaving that for now. Again, it's uh, very easy to get to if I want to replace it later. So I'm going to leave that for now. So that's one more task ticked off the list. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start on the instructions and they tell us to set the steady state current. This will obviously be the steady state current of the output transistors. And they tell us to set the battery voltage at 7 volts. They tell us to remove that um, fuse under there. It's fuse 401, which I've done. I put the connectors or the multimeter probes across it in ammeter mode. And they tell us to adjust a pot 401, is it? Yeah, pot 401 for 20 milliamp of idle current. Now, pot 401 is fairly easy to see. It's that guy over there. Let's put it down carefully and we'll watch the meter. What have we got now? They also tell us to make sure there's no output. In other words, I've disconnected everything. And I'm just, and the volume is at uh, minimum as well. So I'm going to adjust that. That's obviously far too high. No, nope, wrong way. So 20 milliamps. This was really high. That could be, that could have something to do with that uh, stabista that I've changed. Okay, 20 milliamps. We're done. One more step completed. All right, let's move on to the actual alignment of the AM. We've done the 
Crescent current adjustment, which is fine. And now we're going to follow the instructions. And they tell us to connect a voltmeter. They say VTVM, so they mean high impedance, to two points on the radio here. And they actually indicate those points as D and M. And those two points are here. This is connected on the underside, negative. And that's uh, the other one over here. You just follow the drawing and you get there. So the voltmeter is connected on there. And they also tell us that the frequency we're going to use is 460 kilohertz, which I've already set there. The amplitude is at the minimum that I can get out of this uh, signal generator. We'll send that. Now I'm sending that to my step attenuator, switched step attenuator. At the moment I've got no attenuation on. I'll be attenuating, I'll be switching these attenuations in as I look at the voltage that they tell us to look for, which is 0.15 volts, and that's the voltage we'll be reading on the voltmeter at those points that we indicated earlier, D and M. Now they also tell us that the only switch that should be activated is the on and off. So I've actually unclicked these switches. You can do that. You can have one in or the other. When you push the other one, it pops out. But if you click them like that, you can actually get them both out. I think that's what they mean. And they tell us where to connect the signal to, coming from that signal generator. And that is to this point over here. You look at this row of uh, pins here where that switch goes on the underside and it's on the left hand side the second one down and of course the ground of the signal generator is just connected to the chassis so i think we've got everything set up so let's start all right so i'm going to give this thing power and i'm going to give this thing a carrier and i see 0.8 volts far too much so let me start stepping this down i've given it 12 db still too much what is that uh, plus so that's 6 dB plus 12, 18 dB, still not enough. I'll give it 24. Uh, that's good enough, 0.155. It's supposed to be 0.15. Okay, I think that's good enough. And if I put the volume up, I can hear the hiss. And if I put modulation on, I can actually hear the tone. So it tells us no modulation. I'm going to put the volume off. We don't need that. Now they tell us to detune IF trap L131, which is that guy over there. I'm going to turn it counterclockwise. And I can see the voltage going up. I think I'll leave it there. I'm not going to detune it too much. I've given it a quarter of a turn. Now I'm not sure what to do about the amplitude because it's gone up. I think I'm going to reduce it to 1.15 again. It doesn't actually tell us to do that, but let me... I think I'll leave it at that, 0.17. Okay, I've dropped it a bit. It didn't tell us to do that, but I'm just doing that anyway. Now they tell us to adjust L204 and L205. And L204 and L205 is that one there. Get this out of the way. It's that one there. And I'm going to adjust it for a peak, for a max. See if I can get this in there. No, nope, it's going down. That's about it. Didn't do much. But that's done. Now they tell us to adjust IF trap to a minimum with L86 and 87, which is this guy over here. So we try and reduce it. No, it's going up. It is coming down a bit. It's going up again. I think that's about as low as it'll get. So we've done that. Now they tell us to adjust coupling subcritically with K183, 184, and then adjust 183 and 184 for a maximum, and then you adjust it critical again. We've seen this done with the other Sabers, so we'll just do the same thing. So 183, 184. So I adjust this one subcritical, which means counterclockwise. Let's see what happens to the signal. It drops. I won't do too much. I'll just do that. Now we go here for a maximum. It's 
No, wrong way. That seems to be about a peak. And this one. This is not reaching. Uh, I'll have to make a little screwdriver. All I can say is thank God for kebab sticks. No, nope, wrong way. This thing is shifting. I think that's about it. Okay, now they tell us to adjust this one again to critical. So we're going to peak it. That seems to be about it. Okay. Never forget that uh, this has to all be redone again. Make sure that uh, it's all properly aligned later. But this is the first pass. Now they tell us to do 163, 164. Same story. 163, 164. Which is that one over there. That's the critically coupling bit. So we'll adjust it to subcritical again. And then we adjust those to peak. There we go. And that one. I don't think it's reaching again. Back to the kebab stick. Pretty close. I'll have to readjust it again. Then they tell us to do this critical again. Okay, and then they tell us to adjust it to decouple it. It's obviously to widen the IF so that the audio goes down 10%. Now, hmm, I really don't know what 10% would be. I don't want to put a meter on the audio. I'm just going to give it like half a turn. I'm going to trust that. What I should do is actually make it uh, put an audio on there and see what the reading would be. And then they tell us to do L131, which is again, this guy over here. Where is it? This one. That's the IF trap for minimum. No, nope, we've gone past it. Seems to be about there. About there. And that, my friends, is it. And what you're supposed to do next is rinse and repeat. Basically, redo the whole thing a few times. Make sure you get it optimized. I did this very, very quickly to show you. But I would normally go through this a couple of times just to make sure that I squeeze the last bit of performance out of the, uh, out of the IF. Right. That is the AM IF alignment done. Quite easy, right? Yeah. There's an expression that says that necessity is the mother of invention. And I had to invent something because a necessity arose. Look at that. I have removed the front, which I didn't know how to do. And the reason I had to do it is, believe it or not, 
One of the doll strings broke. Yep. <laughs> worst nightmare or one of the worst nightmares on these radios. The uh, AM band dial string just broke. I was testing the reception after doing that IF alignment and I was looking at the uh, RF alignment and this thing just started flicking and I thought, oh boy, it's gone. And yes, it has gone. And so I needed to bring this out. And the last time I had just sort of lifted this a bit and this, these things were holding the faceplate down or rather this thing down. But then I noticed that there were two little screws on there and there. And when I took those screws out, this thing came loose. And of course, it lifted over that indicator and that indicator. So I was able to get into here. So yeah, I guess I've learned something. I've also learned there's a dial lamp that's gone from there. But I've also found that it's quite easy to do this. So if I need to do it again, it's going to be easy. Now, what might not be easy is replacing the style cord. I'm going to do it. I know I'm going to do it. But it's always a bit of a headache. Now, fortunately, they actually give us the uh, diagram and there are two of them. This is one and here's the other one. And I've worked out that the AM one is this bottom one because you can see the tuning condenser over there. You've got to look at this from the front. So from the top, looking it in like that. And that's what you get. You've got the tuning condenser over here and we can see it quite clearly over here. And you've got one pulley there. This goes all the way across. There's a pulley there, pulley there. There's the, uh, the mechanism, which is a geared mechanism that switches in the AM side or the FM side. And then it comes back and turns around here. Now, the problem is this thing broke with this somewhere in the middle. I need to figure out, I need to move this to the end because usually when you look at this, they draw it the way it is. So it's at the end here and that's the position of the uh, tuning condenser. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm not going to put you through this purgatory. I am going to get out some dial cord and I'm going to work on this. And hopefully I will be able to get it sorted out before I lose any more hair. Well, folks, I think, I think I've got it. it goes all the way across that one pulley. It's wound around the tuning condenser. It goes through the respective pulleys back to there and I've actually connected the uh, indicator. And did I get it right first time? Of course not. Of course not. I was getting this thing turning to a point where it was at the end of one of those extensions and it still needed to go more. So what I did was, this is the trick. You have a little screw on the underside of this which you access through the top here. And you can loosen that and you can turn this and then tighten it until you get it right. And I think I've got it right. So let me show you. This has now got to go from one end. And I, I looked at the capacitor. It's fully meshed over there. And of course, it'll be guided through that uh, front panel thingy. And it goes across and it should stop somewhere here. And there we are. Okay, now we can move this around. This thing can move around. I just pull it and push it. So I will know where to put it when I've got that face plate on. But for now, this thing seems to be holding well. The important thing is not quite where to start and where to end that. The important thing is to ensure you've got the right number of turns because if you don't have it exactly in the right position, you can always unscrew that there shift this a bit, tighten it, and keep moving this in the right direction. If you've done this or you want to do this, you'll know what I mean. So get the right number of turns around and you can count that on the drawing. How did I tighten it? Well, I couldn't tighten it really on the screw there, on the spring. So what I did was I took it off this pulley and just turned it around there. I tightened it on the uh, spring and then I forced this over the top and that gives it enough tension to make sure those springs are in tension and it's working. All right, let me put the top on and see if I can align this properly. Actually, let me just clean that a little bit first.
Uh-oh. That's got to go underneath, behind that guy. So I've got to take it out. But let me try it anyway. And it's got to go a little bit to the right. So if I do that, that's too much. That's where it's supposed to be. But that one is wrong. That's got to go under the under that little fishing line. All right, let, rem let me remove that again. That's how you do this, trial and error. Yep, that's perfect. Put the screws back in. All right, good. Just do a careful wipe because I've been touching this and it might have some finger stains, finger marks, fingerprints, whatever you want to call them. So we'll just clean that down. Okay. Now this gets put on. goes underneath. What did I say? Trial and error? See when it's clicked off, it's got to be white under that indicator. And when you click it on, it goes red. Off. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Forgot to put this guy in. Go. Maybe this is the last time. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It's got a push battery indicator uh, button there. So it seems to be done. Whoa. That was a pain. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but it was still a pain. And this thing's working now. This thing is, this tuning is very difficult. First of all, you do get a bit of sway on there. And there's no way to get rid of that. I've tried. It's not precise in any way. And what's worse is that um, it's a very small knob. So when you try to tune in, it's very difficult to get it exact. So without this um, band spread, you wouldn't be able to tune anything on shortwave. That's what it really boils down to. But this obviously will need a little bit of a cleanup. It's got fingerprints everywhere. But this part is completed, I hope. Okay. That was one step I wasn't expecting to have to do. But these surprises do come to test you. I want to show you why this thing doesn't need an RF alignment. I've got this on shortwave. I'm going to put a signal from the signal generator, 9 megahertz, 9 megahertz. See that? With the wiggle and everything else, that's exactly on 9. See that there? See that? It's exactly on 9, and that's right in the center. So. Short wave is fine. Let's try the long wave. I'll put 200 kilohertz. But I've now got to put this. I'll put this on a loop of wire because this is going to be activating the ferrite antenna. So 200 kilohertz long wave. Where's 200 kilohertz? It's over there. I've got to put the amplitude up a bit. See that? Sort of peaks exactly on 200. Medium wave, let's try 800. It's on 800. Let's 
it's on 800. So there's no point doing an RF alignment on this thing, especially for the AM. I've checked the FM as well. That is pretty good. That's right on spot on the frequencies and the reception on FM is exceptional. Really, really exceptional. Even just with the rod antenna. AFC works well as well. Supposed to be 99. It's all working exceptionally well, which means that as far as the alignments are concerned, I'm going to stop here. There's still an antenna missing. I'm going to be looking for one of those. But this will be easy to uh, just remove out of the cabinet and um, or the case and put that in. Other, other than that, this thing is done. And uh, now I've got to focus a little bit of my attention on the on the actual cabinet, on the actual enclosure, which I've already done. I've done one cleaning of it, just with water and soap. And now I'm going to start looking at the details. There's some. Pretty serious details over here. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to do that. We'll see what I can do. There's a lot of a lot of the leatherette has come unstuck. It's all unglued. So let me work on that for a while and we'll see what the result is. And then I'll do a final just quick test on the reception. Okay, good. Well, folks, here she is. I've fixed the cabinet as much as I can. But let me tell you what I did. The first thing I did was I... Uh, taped all the edges that were loose there was just about on every edge the leatherette was coming off so i glued it and used some clamps and uh, started doing a bit of it at a time and then i realized i could do it a lot easier with uh, with painters tape masking tape so i got all that done all the gluing has been done it's fine this was obviously cleaned internally first then what i did was i went to the uh, grill I tried to straighten out some of the slight dents that were on here. They weren't serious, but they were there. But I got them out. And I actually sanded this down with some uh, wet and dry paper, but in dry, without water, just to try and get some of the uh, shine back and get rid of any of the, these spots that were on the grill itself, which then left the black marks or the black lines that uh, had a few specks of paint that had come off. So again, I used my acrylic artist paint with a very very fine brush and I just went dot by dot and painted it up. It's pretty good, looks pretty good. The back has got a few areas here that aren't perfect but that's as good as it's going to get. And then of course the leatherette was just uh, cleaned up or polished with shoe polish, quite a few coats and then um, try to give it a shine. There isn't that much real damage except for this section here. And I was thinking of putting something across the bottom and I realized I can't because the way I've got that uh, IEC power connector there, it relies on this thing slipping over the top and then screwing it on. So I can't actually block the bottom. But we'll see what it looks like when I put that in. I'm not sure if I'm going to need anything else. So let me try that. See if I can remember how this thing goes in. I believe... If I'm not mistaken, it goes in like that, from the top. Or is it from the bottom? I'm not even sure anymore. Probably have to go watch my video again. Did I take it off the top? I think it might have been like this. Yeah, yeah, got to loosen these guys. Okay, I think that's about it. 
Yeah, that seems to be it. And then you've got the screws that go on the side. So we'll see what happens when we put those in. So that side is in. We'll put this side in now. Okay. That is in place. Now I presume the next step would be the top cover. The top cover has got no screws, it's just held in place and then these guys go in here. Okay, that's done. Now we've got to fit the bottom in and that's where that um, little tricky part comes in because I've got to fit this in the back. So I'm going to put this sideways. first thing I need to do is plug that in. I'm worried about this thing falling on me. Okay. These are the two screws that I put in to hold this down. Wait, I've got to get that bottom part first. I've got a feeling I'm forgetting something. This just holds the transformer down. That's tight. Okay. And there were two screws, which I cannot find. But I think these are the same thread. Does this go in or does it just stay here? Ah, perfect match. Should find a shorter one for this. Try and get the same type of screw, but much shorter. Yep, got one. Okay, now I can put these guys in here. That's still not leaving me too happy, but there's not much I can do about it, unfortunately. And there we go. Fantastic. Now all I've got to do, all I've got to do is plug in a mains connector, switch it on over there. Yes. Yes, okay. So let's give this some antenna, put it on FM. Irse Carlos Alexandre volta a se ordenar o arresto da pensão do antigo ministro da Economia. É uma pensão mensal de 26 mil euros que tinha sido já arrestada no âmbito do caso EDP, em que Manuel Pinho Trouble. enfrenta suspeitas de corrupção. A decisão foi depois revogada. And I'm using one of the presets. I don't want to play music, but... This is brilliant. Works very, very well on FM. Very, very well. This is a weak station, but I'm still getting it. So that's working perfectly. And I'll be testing the uh, AM bands later tonight because this is really not uh, a good time to try it. But I just wanted to show you the result. Let's have a closer look. I think this is a pretty good result. Admittedly, this didn't have many problems when it came in. By the way, these guys can loosen and then you can pull it up and then you can tighten it. And I presume if you want to lie it down and use this as a, a stand, you can do the same thing. But this uh, had a few mishaps. The main one was obviously the uh, botched 
power cable there and believe me you can't see anything wrong with this now i mean look at that it looks bloody perfect ha okay i'm happy with that one so here we are looks clean nothing broken at the top there that side was fixed bent in place and uh, readjusted so what is wrong with this guy now well the only thing that's really wrong is the antenna i'm going to be looking for one of these or two of these they need to be identical they need to be the type that fit in here but i'm sure i'll find it there are a lot of these little antennas going around on ebay if you are patient and if you know what you're looking for other than that this radio is complete and um, fm so far is amazing the facility or ease of tuning on am is, is bloody awful if you didn't have the uh, fine tuning that band spread you wouldn't be able to pick up anything this thing is so small remember the the bigger the knob you have for tuning the more control you have it's got to do with the rotation and the the diameter of this thing but other than that it works very well the press presets work perfectly everything's cleaned up very nicely so i'm happy with the result i just want to give you a quick uh, demonstration of this working on uh, the am bands as i said i'll wait for later tonight and then i'll be able to uh, actually comply with the statement i made at the beginning which is that i do this in two videos it's very rare but it happens On peut prendre par exemple le nombre de lettres délivrées aux étudiants par la faculté des sciences. Absolument impossible le crescimento respecto a los últimos meses. Y a partir de ahora hay que construir un smart. Bien, Ivan, nous sommes en Kiram. Nous sommes en Kiram. Nous sommes en Kiram. Segura, debe ser ambicioso. Lo que necesitamos no es solo una agenda de cosas. Par exemple, on a un professeur qui a subi des menaces et qui a été... Donc tous sont liés sécuritaires qui engendrent une situation... Le film ne vaut pas par le Hmm, so what can I say about this? Well, 
I must admit that the reception on the AM bands, especially the long wave, medium wave, and the Europa, which is just a more spread out medium wave band, was a little disappointing. And I think the reason for that is that this thing doesn't have an external antenna connector for the AM bands. This thing relies, I wouldn't say solely, but primarily on the uh, ferrite rod antenna, which means that you really can't use the mini whip very well, which is what I rely on for AM bands. And it just doesn't really respond the way some of the other radios do that I've uh, restored here and tested here, even the transistor portables. So I think that's got to do with my limitations on not being able to rely on local stations with strong uh, transmitters that would pick up nicely on the uh, on the ferret antenna. Okay, that aside, the uh, shortwave is very, very sensitive, but incredibly difficult to tune because this thing is so small and you really do need to use the uh, band spread all the time. FM is bloody amazing. I mean, this thing is amazing. And I can imagine this in a car radio. When you put this into the, these radios, I probably mentioned it, but it's got a connect at the bottom and you would have a, a bracket in your car, probably under the dash somewhere, and you'd push this in, it would fit in nicely, it would plug in that connector, and there's also like a push button switch, which there's like a rod that would push that switch up and switch everything to the car system, including the power supply, the aerial, the speakers. So I'm sure this thing on FM would be fantastic as a car radio, probably very good in areas with, uh, as I said, with strong medium wave bands, but here uh, it's just, just didn't really excite me. Other than that, it's a bloody nice little radio. came out very, very well. It's the first Saba portable that I've uh, restored. It wasn't really a disappointment. It was difficult to get into, but other than that, it worked out quite well. That antenna, I'm going to be looking for those. I'm going to look for two. I probably won't find the exact replacements. I'll probably buy two, and they've got to have the right uh, size fixture at the bottom. It's not difficult. It's very easy to remove this. You just remove these knobs, remove the cover, it comes down and you just replace the, an the antenna. So that's not an issue. But so far, that's it. That's my little project on the Saba Transall Deluxe Automatic. And if anything, I've learned that uh, these Sabas can be quite complex to work on. So that's it for now. And I'm proud to say that I've actually complied with my timing on two videos for this. And I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can certainly do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.